All right, so please give a warm welcome to Nimisha, who is going to guide us through this uh, session as our moderator. And Nimisha has been an integral part of Nextcloud community, you all know her, uh, for quite some time. Initially, she joined as a contributor and now serving as our brilliant UX designer. So we are also excited to introduce our panelists, Marcel and James, and uh, they will share about their incredible journey of contributions. So get ready to be inspired and curious about how you can start making your mark in the world of Nextcloud. So to you, Nimisha. So um, those of us who were also there for last year's conference may have seen something similar moderated by my lovely colleague Jan, whom I can't see right now. But the reason we have this is because the community is such an integral part of Nextcloud and, you know, and open source in general, as we just saw. It's such a powerful part of what we do. And you know, might be nice to highlight some of the you know, people who have been a part of the community and see the journey. So um, Marcel, James, thank you so much for joining uh, us over here today. And uh, maybe we can just start off with some introductions. So why don't we you know, just talk about what, what you've been doing and how you're associated with Nextcloud. So I should go first? Yeah, sure, okay. sure. <laughs> OK, welcome, everyone. Um, who was here for the lightning talks this morning? Um, had seen me already. So, um, my name is Marcel, sales engineer with Nextcloud since this year and before um, being a long year contributor to Nextcloud with several open source apps. Um, as I mentioned before, first I started with the audio player. I think it's even like nine years ago almost. Um, or yeah, something like this audio player. And then recently, like four years ago, started with the analytics app, like an open source reporting with the next cloud. Um, yeah, and this was my journey where I got into touch with the yeah, app store, app development for, for next cloud. Nice. And James? Um, lately, things have been, so I moderate on the next cloud forum. And I also do testing. And I've written a lot of documentation and done community management for Nextcloud Pi. And uh, previously, I did a lot of testing for different apps in Nextcloud. And these days, I feel like the platform is pretty strong. And I think the documentation is much improved. So it's been more just about helping like people through the forum and to have a better experience in like reporting bugs and providing logs and getting the information that helps developers to get fixes or to help find contributors to submit pull requests. Super cool. And you also mentioned that you are associated with Nextcloud Pi in your um, you know, very cool uh, lightning talk. And those of you who are joining online, if you haven't seen that, both, go see both of their lightning talks because it was very cool. Um, so that was very much like a community project that you found, right? Like it already existed. How did that work for you? How did you come across it? And why did you choose to sort of contribute um, in the forums and documentation rather than code, which is sort of the first thing that we think about when we think about contributions? Yeah, honestly, this is something I just do in my off time. Uh, I am a 100% volunteer on all this. This is just something I do for fun in my free time. Um, never did it to tell anyone about it. <laughs> but, Here uh, you are. <laughs> but, yeah. But I've been a part of a lot of community spaces. Um, my background, actually, I'm a trained mime and clown, I'm a theater performer um, <laughs> and a musician. And I have a also background in writing. And so I, f I found this as like an introverted thing that I could do on the side. It's fun. It's different from that. But I still get wrapped back into community and engagement. and. Um, yeah, I like making things easier for, for people. If, if something's confusing to me, I'd rather help fix that and make it clearer for everyone else. And that's never changed for me. I'm still into helping others make it easier. And I feel like Nextcloud Pi makes the process of running Nextcloud easier for home non-technical users. So that's why I'm drawn to it. 
Nice. And on the flip side, Marcel, you made a whole app, which is basically just code. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, there's design and documentation as well. So I mean, how was your experience contributing or sort of developing a whole, whole app, which I mean, I as a designer, I'm like, that's like so off limits for me. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. So how did that go? What, is, was there something in your background that helped you do that? Or you know, was it something you were just tinkering around and you just found? Um, yeah, I think at the beginning, it's a lot of try and error and search for existing apps, which do like somehow what you're achieving to do. Because if you're complete, completely new to this topic, I was like really like, a, let's say, amateur developer learning some PHP on my own. And if you then, for the first time, go into classes, functions, whatever, um, it can be really challenging. So for the first time, you search for apps which are doing similar topic, what do you want to achieve? Stick together the bits and pieces and then yeah, hope that it's working and then, then, then come from there. So really the, the, the feature of open source that all the, uh, that the source code is available on GitHub is then a feature because this will be your reference because at the beginning, you're, if you're not a pro, you will start collecting the pieces from everywhere. Um, and then the second point is always um, the community itself, of course, you have the, the big community, uh, the help uh, forum that, that you mentioned. And also, um, sounds like a little bit self-advertising now, but also what's very helpful is that Nextcloud itself is also supporting the community. Um, if there are some more tricky questions, there are always some of the Nextcloud engineers also supporting you on your, on your uh, when it comes to technical details, when you want to do try something, what was not done in any reference apps, so it's very helpful that Nextcloud also dedicates some of their engineers to, to the community to support them and also answer them with their technical question or also inexperience to, to, to bring them further. So that yeah, Nextcloud employees also take part of the, of the help forum and it's not like we do the internal stuff and help us external in community. So it's more, more integrated into each other and I think this is very valuable if you start looking into, into Nextcloud, that you also have, to have your, your back covered by, by Nextcloud itself. Yeah, I've used the forum a lot for you know, some you know, thinking about what features we could do. I think there was a really nice post that you opened about photos. I think it was right. It was you and it was just like a whole big post. So I think the forum is a really nice way to contribute. And you're super active on that. And you know, how long have you been involved with Nextcloud? I'm, I'm not quite sure anymore, but okay. I guess... Um, <laughs> so that's long, yeah. <laughs> well, so I saw some contributions from 2017 recently, so okay. I guess that, that long. Um, I remember I was hearing about OwnCloud at Linux Fest Northwest back in 2015, so I guess that was previous to the fork to NextCloud. Um, but yeah, the posts of the forum really work. There was a really cool... I would say the coolest forum discussion that I've had, because it actually meant something, <laughs> was uh, having a discussion with one of the developers. Um, I guess I won't say his name, but we have a discussion on the on the forum in regards to integrating different things together, and we were talking about integrating the apps. So what's the way to do that? You test all of the different apps. You test all the different functionality, and then we write up what was supported, what wasn't supported with things like the project's functionality, which is now deprecated, but it's like, how do we make this better? So you have a discussion on a specific topic and make it like wiki editable and, and encourage contributions. And as people kept adding ideas, that led to a design call. And so I had a design call at, at 5 a.m. or something <laughs> um, with, uh, with a Nextcloud design team. And, they were, and we were talking about integrating the apps together and they were talking about a way to call an action and they were thinking of using I think like a hash mark or something and then you'd be able to do an action. And we had this call and then they were thinking about using a slash and it didn't, like nothing specifically happened from it. It's kind of like well what was that call? But then fast forward a year or something later this, we continued this discussion in GitHub but, um, and other people had similar experiences, but all these things led to the smart picker functionality. So these discussions led to the smart picker where you call an action to do a thing. And there's other discussions to be involved, but for us specifically it was how do we integrate all these things together? I'm in one app, but I want to do something else. What do I do? And so sometimes these discussions are really fruitful, but the best way to do that is that you have the discussions in the forum and then in GitHub and you 
you know, keep everything interconnected so discussions can happen in the right place so people can see them as it helps both the community but also the developers themselves and what they end up wanting to implement. Yeah, I absolutely. Think, I think it's also a very important topic what you mentioned because this is a, the design review call which is scheduled by the design team from Nextcloud is very helpful. I had one of my apps also being in there. So you have an app, you're proud of it and then you request from the Nextcloud design team, can we have a design review call of it? Um, takes for one hour and then you have a really long to-do list. <laughs> You're a little depressed. <laughs> you're a little de depressed afterwards. Like, oh shit, do I have to redesign my half, half of my app? Um, but it's really valuable because um, if you stick to your view of something, it's not necessarily what other people might think of UI or user integration. So, what you mentioned, the design um, design call, is one of these, yeah, one of these topics that where Nextcloud offers some 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 support for the for the community also, which is very valuable to get also insights. Um, yeah. From, from yeah, absolutely. next outside in, in the, yeah. into your app. So, um, 12 o'clock on Tuesdays, uh, Berlin time. If you want to drop in, please do. <laughs> it's always exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you said you've been like working, like doing open source for about nine years, which is a really long time. So, how has how, what changes have you seen, or you know, like how 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 has your journey been? Because it's that's super interesting to me. Because I got involved only you know, a few uh, years ago. And I've already seen a lot of change, because I think some of this design review call and stuff, it kept evolving. So how did, how, how was, how's your experience changed over the years? I think that's super interesting. I mean, first, the, the obvious change was at the beginning when I was doing my first app, the audio player, it was still hosted for exclusively for, for OnCloud back then. Okay, so that, that old is the back end of the, of the app already. And uh, then there was the time when there was a, the, the fork to Nextcloud and you were like, hmm, will it work? Will it not so work? Um, at, at the beginning, you were trying hard because we're I mean, not sure which way it went. So trying hard to have one app being supported still by both landscapes, um, fighting hard to be, yeah go like uh, um, bi-directional, sooner or later decided that, okay, only go one route. Um, so this was like, like the first obvious change that, that everything shifted and from there also you could recognize that the one solution was they are getting much more advanced in the development and then yeah, pretty soon afterwards they were not compatible with the other, each other anymore. So let's say the other solution was then phased out. So this was like the, the biggest change. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh my god, that's something that I can't, you know, like I'm too young for this. <laughs> so yeah. what about what about you, James? What do you want to know? Yeah, like how has your experience uh changed over over the years that you helped was out? There, was there an own cloud pie? No, I think oh. it was that. <laughs> Well, at the time, I didn't want to use own cloud because because of the not open components. Oh, okay. Um that's so for me, I think uh I always want to use open tools and it's not always possible, but for me that's really important. And I think one thing that's changed for me, like when I talk to people about something like GDPR in the United States, they don't understand what I'm talking about. But one of the things that they do understand is that I think people have the right to be forgotten. When you're a part of something, you have the right to take your data and to walk. And I think that's really important. And um, so I, I want to use tooling where people have the ability to leave. They're not etched in stone forever. It doesn't mean they didn't have an impact there, but they need personally to be able to go yeah. away. It's like a right to change your identity and flee. <laughs> and I can't believe how difficult that is to do in, in software. It's in the internet and in our life. It's, it's really hard. Um, so I think things like that are like an ongoing challenge. And one of the things I like about this platform is, and I want more of even uh, personally, is just for people to be able to interact with it who are not users, who do not have an account, who do not want an account and never will have an account. But I still want to be able to engage with those people, right? People who don't know what Nextcloud is. Like I think that I always want those people to be engaged and have the same kind of experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's lot, a bit more awareness about this sort of things right now too. I think, you know, with legislation, as Simon just said, there's more people are recognizing that these sort of uh, privacy aware and open source technologies are actually important to people and important to society. So there is a lot more people coming into open source as well. So, I mean, if there's someone new coming in, um, I mean, given 
your all your experience, I guess. Like, how is the best way that they can help out right now? So, for maybe like someone who's similar to you with not a lot of background. So, if there was someone completely new who was like, this this is important to me, how would they how could they help out? Uh, number one way people can help out is to use these things. You have to try try tools. You have to try things, and you have to find what works for you. It's going to be different for every person, but you find projects that you love and especially if you find a project and you want to work with others, not just to have something for the sake, I think, of consumption, it's great. But you realize like, oh, if, if there's collaboration, if, that's, if you want collaboration, then that is somewhere where open source and also free software, and I'm talking like F FSF free style software, mm -hmm. can be really helpful. And it's still a challenge um, to develop and to make available and for people to know about it. But I think it's a, it's a worthy challenge, especially when you find a tool you really like. Absolutely. And what do you think, Marcel? Yeah, How I, I think it's talk? very important if you want to get into the topic, um, what, what you said, um, use the software. Because developers developer software from their point of view, but the more people they use, are using the software, the more, more business cases, the more use cases you will have for the software, and the more like also unplanned events for, for user interaction and user exchange you have. And this is the more thing. Use the software, see where the second software where the solution can help you for really a personal need, and, and then start from this one because then you get involved and you're personally interested. If you, if you say you want to contribute, you go to GitHub, search for the first 100 tickets, and simply try to work them from top to bottom. I think this will not work because this will simply not motivate you. This was when I first came in for the audio player. The reason was like I, did, I needed an audio player for, for the kids that was easy usable. That's where the, the audio player was originally made of. That's <laughs> Kids had a had a simple solution to uh, to click on their on the cover art on, on on a tablet. So <laughs> you need a personal use case to be personally motivated to contribute. I think this is, this is the entrance because then after a while you get more into the details, you're more familiar, and then you're more tolerant to to let's say not the interesting topics, the boring topics, like <laughs> sometimes also challenging topics like testing and documentation, as we all know. But first. You need need a personal connection to it, to, to your target, to your aim, because without it's very theoretical work, I think. Yeah, I mean, even for for me, I actually started, uh, you know, contributing to Nextcloud because I just was interested in design, and Nextcloud had a design presence, so I just dropped in on some of the design review calls, and I was like, this is really cool. So I think that personal investment is super important, and I think speaking of liking design stuff. What do you like about contributing? So, I mean, right now you work um, for the team as well, but you did start off as a contributor. So maybe you can talk about what are the nice things about contributing? <laughs> um, of course, the, the nicest thing, if, you, if you're, it depends on what's on, so my case of contributing an app, developing an app, um, the nicest thing is always, if you look at the statistics, if you if you hand out a new release and then later you look at the at your GitHub statistics and you're happy, let's if you see that your your app gets uh, downloaded like um, audio player the maximum was like thirty thousand downloads or whatever um, over a longer period. So this one is really what keeps you motivated if you get feedback. In general, it's very hard to get really user feedback that because when users come back to you, it's most likely when they file an issue because something is not working. It's not very often that users open a ticket and say, hey, great that you used it. It's more, so that's more kind of the mm -hmm. negative feedback you normally get. But if you're then looking at the numbers, at the adoption rate, at the download numbers, I think this is a very, very motivational thing to, to get continued. I think same for you. Um, I think for me, the best part about contributing is that it, it things do improve and it just can take time. It can be a slow game. Um, I realized it's, I've gotten into fermentation and I feel like contributing <laughs> to open platforms is a lot like doing fermentation where you try different experiments and then you check in with them a week later, two weeks later, a month later, a year later. It's, <laughs> it's a slower process and, and you're always trying to fine tune and, and find ways to better contribute uh, and to encourage others. But I think the truth is when something great happens, it basically, um, it just becomes the new norm. And every time you do something that's really great, it's basically the things that people don't notice because everything works and everything is fine. And uh, 
that's really the sign that you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> when nothing <It's>, is broken. <laughs> yeah. Well, when something is, is, you know, is working and it's gotten that fine polish after a lot of development and contributions and a yep. lot of time, but then it's like there's also a short memory collectively of the experience and we just sort of live in the now <laughs> of how where everything's at, if that makes sense. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and the expectation, expectations are also rising so the people after a while and if you deliver some quality they expect you to continue to deliver the, product, uh, the quality so you set yourself your, your burden even higher so yeah, that's quite some challenge. But that's where cont other contributors also come in when, yep. you know, like if you make a product that's really good, if you make an app or something that's really good, um, the pressure on you sort of raises, as you said. But there's also more people who are coming in and using this app and they're like, oh, that's actually really cool. Maybe I can help out. So I think that's kind of how you build a community as well. So, I mean, that's, that's one thing that I really like. A lot of people just drop in because they find something cool. And then, and then that's it. That's, it's purely out of, like, they find something cool. And I think that's really nice. Yep. Um, yeah, sorry, we're going to say something? Oh, just, um, I was just mulling all that over. And uh, I, think, I think one of the things that's really tricky with, with these kinds of projects is it's hard not to put an undue amount of burden on an individual. I think it's really hard when someone's working on something for it not to be piled, piled onto them. Like all of the stress of something gets basically ends up on, on a person. And you know, then you get into issues of like burnout and like maintenance burden is, is, is a lot. And um, I think that's something that's always, that's something I would think that's always a goal is to try to lessen that burden on on specific individuals and make them feel like they still have a life and they still have flexibility and you know because you're contributing to an open project whether you're a paid employee or it's some random person on the internet and it's easy to lose sight of that I think within the greater community. Uh, if that yeah, makes sense. I think it's sometimes sometimes also force expectation by the users. Um, when they see you are developing an app, it's your free time. It's your it's it's your personal free time you're investing, and only because of one user has a use case which is not working, he can make like a big fuss on GitHub in a GitHub ticket, uh, as it's the most important error I ever found in, in the world. But for you as a use case, or for all the thousand other users, this is not really a, a real error because you, you don't didn't have any any further reports for this. So it's um, yeah, sometimes can be tricky to. Yeah, to, to to bring the message to 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 users or issue trackers to, to to tell them here, yes, I understand your issue, but it might not be the biggest priority. It's for you, but not for the others. And at the same point of time, you still want to be polite and not <laughs> not simply block them. But sometimes it can also be challenging because there are also there are people in the space um, that are not that um, yeah, yeah tolerant and and, and I think recognizing you what you in your lightning talk to be patient, I guess. And I think that that applies from every, every party involved over here, the maintainer, the user, and the person who wants to contribute or open an yep. issue as well. So that aspect of, you know, things sort of take time is, I think, you know, kind of something that I've learned with an open source project. So maybe um, what would, sort of what would help? So. Um, you've, you've, you've done this for a while, so you've talked about some of these things that maybe were barriers or things that were maybe not super nice about contributing. So what would have helped if, um, you know, or did you see some things that were implemented? You said that there was a really cool thing that happened once and then that was sort of the, that was sort of the you know, standard after that. So maybe we can share some things about how, how, like how things changed as improvements and how they made you feel better or what you wish would have uh, happened. You have one? Uh, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> one? Well, one of the things I know that was that is available in the Nextcloud Pi project that's really useful is we have a thing called NCP report, and it's a script, and you can run it at any time, and it generates the info about what version of Nextcloud you're using, PHP, and and gives the log error info and everything, so you have the information needed to supply it over, so you actually give useful feedback. So I think tooling like that is really useful, and then. It, that's why improving documentation is useful too, to help guide when someone does want to file a bug report or something, finding ways to make that process more productive and 
and more streamlined so that the information is going to the developer and they don't have to ask for clarification. They can just get the information that's needed. And yep. I think that's an ongoing target. I think this is always the issue like proactive error reporting or proactive issue, issue, um, issue, issue tracing. Um, it's always easy to say like, here, this doesn't work. Well, so I have it in the analytics app. Here, I, I, I connected the data source. It doesn't work. And I say, OK, yes, this information is like 100% worthless because <laughs> I don't know information. I don't have a debug log. I don't have anything. So it's, a, it's um, yeah, interesting to get the information you need as a, because you're willing to support um, um, the, the, the issue tracker. But you're, you're, you also need some information. Yeah? But I think after a while you, you get the uh, you get the people to to provide information or you uh, get the get their tickets better commented and then it's on the on the right track. Yeah, I sort of have a like similar I don't know experience, but from a design side where someone says uh, you know we can do this to make it better, and I think a lot more times it's helpful to say why it's a problem. That's kind of like the error report for a user experience. So what issue is this and uh, why it is a problem, and that helps define the solution uh, a bit better. So I kind of understand you know, the whole error report thing. Well, in regards to that, so one of the things that is what we talked about last year at the conference for NextCloud Pi is just um, getting involved in the forum. The real reason for that was in order to expand NextCloud Pi's presence there because we were tired of people asking us questions in a chat. We have a chat because people want a chat. But that's not really helpful to have a chat. Um, it's nice, but outside of that, it's not helping any, because no one's going back through Telegram to search the history to find information that's going to help them. So instead, what we did was built a presence in the forum itself, and that regard, that involved learning about discourse, the software, plat the, fr the free software platform for the forum, understanding how that worked, and then developing some tooling for that, which helped us on the forum. So then as a moderator, creating a way for users to ask questions and also to basically join a group to co-write and improve our documentation moving forward. But all they needed was access to the forum, and that's where all of our problems are, like questions for people's individual instances, that's where those questions can be answered because their problems are honestly just regular NextCloud problems. They're not specific really to our platform. Those, those kinds of questions really go in a GitHub repo. But that's, that's not, that doesn't have really anything to do with somebody setting up an app and then their app's not working. It's like that doesn't matter if you're using the NextCloud Pi or the Snap or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's more about understanding the configuration of that app, mm -hmm. which means they need to be a part of the larger conversation in the forum. And so we did that, and that is a great thing because then we don't have questions about that in the chat anymore, and that goes away. And that's great because it was a huge burden. Oh, so, I mean, that sounds like you sort of simplified how people were communicating. And that seems like a sort of recurring issue with a lot of projects as well, where users maybe don't have a proper way to give feedback because GitHub is too technical, or the people who are on GitHub don't um, maybe have the same experience as you know my mom, for example. So I think solving that problem of communication was one of, was, <laughs> Are we okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so solving that problem of communication is something that's really important and keeps contributors motivated as well. Because for me, finding a chat um, on talk was something that was really helpful um, when I first started getting uh, involved in Nextcloud. But I think there's also the way you get, because uh, if you come back to the original purpose here, how to contribute, I think there's also the entrance level. Because if you have everything in a forum, um, uh, all the all the questions that are answered there. But first, that the people who are using the app or perhaps advanced users are in these forums. So, um, and there, there's not, no better experience if you see a question. You have no uh, as the maintainer of something. You know, don't have time to answer right away. And then you you come back after some hours, and some some other users start to to, to answer the the user questions. There, there's no better thing because this is a sign that someone else also got involved understood the application and other people also interact each other and, uh, and answer each other uh, other questions. Uh, and I think this is the first level because if you're, if you're able to answer other users' questions, you understand the solution and this is like the first entry step and most likely 
they will also look into more details and more technical challenges. That's how you so built them a, in now. <laughs> to, to, to come back to what we initially said, if you want to contribute, use it. Use it, understand it, then you can like come from the understanding, from the usability questions into technical questions. And then sooner or later, hopefully, you're digging into code lines or whatever and, and <laughs> conti really contributing on a technical side to, uh, to, to an app or, or a distribution with documentation, testing, or really code reviews. And I think having this one is the, yeah, using it, understanding it, and then interacting. That's the first entrance level, I would say. Nice. Super cool. I mean, we have uh, 10 minutes left, so I think I'll, we can start wrapping up slowly. Um, you said that you were involved in a bunch of other things outside of Nextcloud as well. So maybe we can talk about our experiences contributing to some other open source projects. And were there any super positive things that we can maybe learn from that? Um, I just wanted to go back, sorry, oh, really yeah, quick sure. to, the <laughs> go ahead. to the contributing thing. I just want to say the, the barrier of entry to contributing in this circumstance is as low as it can possibly be in terms of engaging with the developers and with the company and with the projects and like yourself. And um, I think that that's important for people to understand because it seems like it's a whole world to engage in, but the good news is that the barrier is very low to join something like GitHub and to make a, you know, fork a project and to make changes and submit them back. It becomes more complex in terms of sending back changes that you will understand as the developer or that, that will be helpful to you if I'm trying to push a, you know, a pull request to you to, for a fix. And uh, I think that's, that process is like an ongoing process where you, you, try you try fixes and you're also learning to code or getting better at coding, following a design. And it's just kind of an ongoing process. And Definitely. I think people just have to embrace it and um, keep, keep trying. And, and it's, it's really not hard to get started, but I think it is an art form to hone. Yeah, f fully agree. And after, after the first uh, successful distributions, hopefully you learn that it's not that bad. And yeah. then from there, it continues from answering the first user question to first feature requests or whatever. Yeah, and then you and have a whole app after that. So <laughs> That's the aim, yeah. Is this off? Oh, no. In terms of other projects, um, so many other projects. I think uh, if you use something if you want to use a tool, you should just use it and try, try and fail. So if you try setting up, um, you know, this tool on a toaster and it runs poorly, um, then you can dig into why that is, or you can find other tooling. And um, don't just presume that other tools aren't useful or that they're not worth trying. Like if you've tried. Uh, Nextcloud, you can try OwnCloud, which was ported to Go. And I don't know if anyone else has heard this, but I've heard in the past people thinking, well, now that OwnCloud is ported to Go, Nextcloud is obsolete. Well, obviously that is not true because the project is not obsolete. Here we are. Um, and it's way more complex than that. And there's different advantages to different tools. Or you can try SyncThing or rsync. And you can try all these different tools and they'll have different benefits to you. Or you can just try something totally unrelated and um, try to find how things work together best for yourself. It just makes you a better contributor the, the more diversity you have and, and uh, experiences, I think, helps. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people open PRs across just a whole bunch of different projects and all of them are in the same vain, but they all have their own advantages. And I think that's, you know, in the end, all, uh, all of open source is sort of fighting the same fight. So I think that's really helpful as well. And I think for our last question, I mean, you have any closing thoughts? Like, I really want to just highlight how cool it is that there is so much people out here who are just contributing on their free time. I started off doing that, Marcel started off doing that, you're continuing to do that. I mean, what can we, I mean, what can we learn from each other, I mean? Simply do it. <laughs> Simply give it a try. As I said, search something what, what, where you have a relationship to and sooner or later you will success automatically. You will have success. Um, 
it's that simple. Search for for something you like, and then you will 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 get involved in it. It's Sounds give good. it a try. It's not that hard. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of fun tools too that work together. Like um, Nextcloud is a project is a fun project, but it's not. That's not only that's only part of it. It's like Nextcloud is more of an an interface, but then you can extend it by if you're interested in file systems, you can look into things like TrueNAS, or if you want to learn about networking, you can build firewall appliances, and all these things can work together. But they all kind of solve different issues, which can correlate, but it also helps you learn more and stay inspired. Or thinking about other the use cases. Um, Probably we are running a foundation, a public foundation, and then we also in integrate Nextcloud because foundation, obviously, open source is, 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 is good to be used in foundation because we are not using license costs. So it's, it's, like, it's not like the solution is also thinking about where you can possibly additional, where you have an additional use for the solution. And the whole foundation on our side is run on top of Nextcloud for this. So it's like, um, yeah. Combination of, of open source, NGO, for example. Um, so, so there can be additional use cases. It's yeah, a very, that's very, very wide range of, uh, of possibilities. Just, uh, just deploying something, a project that you're, uh, you know, passionate about, and using it for different use cases is also a really good way of contributing because it's spreading the word about how all the different ways it can be used. Yep. And even today, in all the different lightning talks, we saw that you can. You can, you, know, you can translate, you can work on documentation, you can just open issues, you can help out on the forum, you can do design, that's what I do. You can build apps, there are total like, workshops, you, know, you can organize stuff like you know, meetups like this. So there are a lot of ways to contribute. And if you would like to find out more, there's the link. You can go to nextcloud.com slash contribute and you'll be able to see all the different ways you can get involved. And there are Three minutes left, but I don't have anything to say, so I think we can, we can wrap, wrap it up. up. <laughs> we good? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>